All right, let's just get this uh, straight. I would like to apologize for the introductory blurb that I have to put on the front of this. Yeah, I could re-record it because that's what most people would do because then you wouldn't be subjected to my mediocrity. But I prefer to subject you to my mediocrity. So, enjoy. How the hell, universe? Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm back. I'm back much to the, uh, the greater consciousness at large's dismay, I'm going to keep doing this. Yeah, no, I'm not going to quit on the 498th episode. I'm going to get to 500 at least. Because, well, you'll see in this uh, following recording, including a couple of segments that I did back on July 3rd, um, my, my loss of humor. And it's on full display. You'll, you'll get plenty of, uh, of sense of disappointment when it comes to laughing with me at the universe. Now, laughing at me, I think there's plenty of that to come. So whether or not you should listen to this, as always, I think you have better things to be doing with your life. But if you are going to listen to this, speed it up. 1.75, 2.5, something on your speed player that's better than 1.5 will get my conversation back into a flow that is understandable and relatable while not wasting time like all my pauses and uh seeking vocabulary that I don't even remember if it exists, it makes it tolerable. And since I've been gone for three weeks, I feel like I owe you this public service announcement that listening to me is not advised. But if you have to do it, well, speed it up at least, right? And then don't expect any laughs because what you're about to listen to is not funny. Now, it's delivery and the messenger are both Mm. clowns, jokers, and self-disclosed sixes. So if that's of intrigue, then yeah, go ahead, listen. Hello, universe. Oh boy, here we sit in July already. July 3rd? Yeah, it's the 3rd. It's Wednesday, July 3rd. In the year of... I don't even care what year it is. It's the year in which I turned 55. We can call it that year. And by having 55 years of life on this planet... Well, you'd think that I'd have given up on caring about what's coming next since really how many more next are there for me. But no, I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with the idea that what's coming next has not been thought out with the kind of humanity that our species is capable of and instead is headed in a spiraling, hmm, self-destructive, self-loathing, direction of consequence. And I'm not trying to be very serious here at all. In fact, if June has any residue left to drag into July, it would be that of lightheartedness and good, uh, optimistic outlooks. So, obviously I'm not trying to drag any kind of pessimism into July. I just have um, been facing down that which I can't understand. And it always leaves me in a position of being somewhat hmm, empty. It makes me have to accept that there are limits to what I can know about this particular run of life on 8675309 Earth. It, it's not that I don't get that without enduring something to the fullest extent, something you truly can't even understand, until you have had that experience and can reflect back upon it, you can't really understand growth of a true fundamental nature. If you knew everything as soon as you encountered it, well, then it'd be a lot like just remembering life's past instead of experiencing this life now, in the now, to grow for the future. And so, as I watch the entire embodiment of humanity seemingly making the same mistakes I make, well, they kind of stand out. Pause. I'm pause. Okay. One of the one of the things I haven't done in probably a week to ten days is check in on the news, and I I can go only so long before I feel like I might have gotten too far behind to not be uh, so obtuse in public as to make an embarrassment of myself because I didn't know that blankety blank had happened. Well, ah, uh, so I feel like today or tomorrow, but 
tomorrow's the fourth, so that doesn't seem like a good day to be going to look for news since they'll just be talking about patriotic, nationalistic brainwashing. So today's kind of the day I feel like I'm committed to having to go look at the news. So I was trying to get on here and be all optimistic and upbeat and cheerful about life before I did that because that's liable to turn me into a <laughs> kind of person. And uh, so here's the thing. Getting into my neighborhood has been the absolute most fulfilling part of my last five years of life. Absolutely, hands down, no question. It has been fantastic. Because what I've discovered is how many people are out there that want a vein of possibility to thinking that they could contribute to truly creating a better world. Even if that's just by correcting the mistakes this world's currently enduring over and over and over and over and over again. Unfortunately, because I think the uh, the concept of us and them, the only really us and them that exists in the entire fucking universe is boys and girls. And I'll admit, that's an us and them. But every other us and them is made up. And I think all that makeup of us and themness is the problems that create the disharmoniousness that is us and all of them others that we do to ourselves. And as I talk to more and more people about this, I think it's clicking with them as well. Like, why do we have political parties? Why does that even exist? Why are we always being laced into a binary opposition? Because if we start to think in binary opposition, then we start to welcome the idea that there are others instead of we're all fucking humans. And so, ah, while that has just been a wonderful conversation to have over and over and over again with people from the age of 15 to 90, I just don't know that... Well, starting the conversation is the first thing. You have to get people optimistic about the fact that, yeah, there is a better world to be had. We all know that. And yeah, we can all do a little bit of something to make that happen. And that's really the key to the entire human shift into a higher level of consciousness that's waiting to be had on this planet. So all I've been able to do is see that there's an army full of people with the same level of energy. Executing that into some sort of move forward, let's all do better contagion. I'm not sure what the... I'm not sure what the delivery device in that particular John Grisham novel should be. So, wait, that wouldn't be a John Grisham novel. Fuck no, that would be uh, the sciencey dude who wrote uh, Jurassic Park. Michael Crichton. Totally. Buzz. Um, balls. Okay, wait, 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 let's just play a little game. Let's just think. Okay, I haven't seen the news in, let's say, eight to ten days. And in that time, what would I love to open this up and find out is happening that I just didn't know because I just wasn't looking. Okay. Obviously, number one, Israel has decided to lay down all arms and decided to go over to Gaza with all kinds of food and medicine to say, oh my God, we're such assholes and look what we did here. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That would be my number one. Okay. Number two would be, well, the since I assume Benjamin Netanyahu is still alive, though he hasn't called in the show in a while, so I wouldn't actually know that. But let's assume he's still alive. Nobody has assassinated him or he hasn't died or he hasn't taken his own life in some sort of last minute hope to appease God for all the crap he pulled here. But whatever Netanyahu's status is, let's assume it's most likely alive. And so if he's alive, that means that the idea that Israel went over and laid down all their arms and started apologizing and bringing food and medicine is probably not happening. Well... If that's still the world that I left behind and exists today, then I would hope America had said enough and separated itself completely from Israel. That would be new story number two, I would hope. Pause? Nope. No pause. We're going to no numbers three, four, and five. That's as far as we'll take this, because otherwise we'll spend all day doing this. Number three. Well, I would like to find out that um, the Wall Street... Uh, Federal Reserve Bank entity known as the Federal Reserve has uh, been stripped of all its power so that now the uh, actual 
currency valuation and distribution and monetary decision making therein is back in the hands of the people via government policy instead of in the hands of a corporation via the Federal Reserve. Literally, that would be my number three. Okay, so number four would have to be something about upbeat discovery of what? We had discovered... Oh, no, obviously. Number four is easy. That America comes clean that they didn't go to the moon. And then number five would be... What? Number five would be that they've discovered what the fuck is happening in the oceans that's causing so much heat. And what's causing all the fish to spin and spin and spin and spin and then die. If you haven't seen those two stories... Well, then you need to watch more news. Pause. Uh, um, pause. I'm not insinuating that we can all find all these stories. Uh, that's the problem with news these days, huh? Do you even know about the spinning fish? If you don't know about the spinning fish, go look that one up. Seriously. I'll wait. Actually, I'm going to go watch some news myself. So, we're almost nine minutes into this thing. I say let's just cut this at the nine minute mark. Let's all go take in some extra news and we'll come back and discuss it. Right on. Hello, universe. It's been a while, and that's an understatement, because I think it's been about three weeks since I last posted a recording, and I'm shocked <clears throat> that I've taken this uh, long to um, find my voice to share some part of myself that feels meaningful again. <clears throat> because the last three weeks have been uh, humorless, I suppose, is about the best word I can choose. And uh, it's been humorless in the sense that <clears throat> I have... <clears throat> Whoa, I have smoked too much weed this morning. Pause. Uh, pause. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm pretty fucking high, I'll admit that. But of course I'm pretty fucking high. This is, this whole, the whole point of this is I have to somehow connect through my confessional narrative uh, um, exploration of the human condition with another who's swimming in self-doubt and self-loathing to the point that without realizing the world just isn't that serious. Well, this person may not persist. Sorry for all the background noise from the toilet flushing, but I spit a loogie into the toilet, and then I spit another one, and I missed, and I hit the seat, and I'm like, fuck, I missed. How did I fucking miss? Then I'm thinking, yeah, but fuck it. I live alone, so that's really not that big a problem, because that'll probably slide down into the toilet, and then I'm fine, right? And <clears throat> why am I sharing that? Because there's nothing I won't speak to. There's nothing that I won't divulge. I have entered this project of revealing because I think it's critical that we come to see how much of our lives we've compartmentalized into protective boxes of fear that sharing will change the perceptive or the perceptions of people around us in some drastic way that will alter our life's purpose, meaning, fulfillment, whatever. In other words, in some way or another, we just aren't being our real selves all the time. And <clears throat> while this used to be me to the nth degree, there was no one living with more warped sense of realities than I, it at some point was plastered into my head that you don't choose to live in this reality as anything other than your true self if you're going to come out of it with a fulfilling and meaningful, purposeful life that ascends into the next potential realm of spiritual enlightenment. All things that me, an atheist, once in a while agnostic, but atheist, had no business concluding. 
these were not some level of <clears throat> growth from all my uh, adventures in the religious communities. Fuck no, I think the religious are fools for the most part, still. But I can't deny that what they do have that I didn't know existed is a connection to the ethereal level, whether that's God or the spiritual inner play of the force or some hearkening to another capacity of existence that we all shut down to come here and fire our way through the earth program. I don't know. I don't care. But I know it exists. I know it speaks to me. I know I can't avoid it. If I try to ignore what it presents as my opportunities to move forward, it slaps me in fucking reality space into those purposeful motions regardless. I don't have a choice. And so, in some ways, I feel like I'm a non-player character in the simulated universe. I only have so many options to play out before influence from whatever grander scheme of things starts to pummel me into a persuasive position of do this now, fulfill this desire, go through this project, take on this side quest, or the game will shut down and you will suffer the most. And it it's <laughs> it's appearance in my life has been through both mystical, as it were, revelations here in this reality, interpersonal interactions in this reality, and a whole, what it feels like, sub-routine interactivity access point, whatever it might be, that my dream world offers me into a huge universe of potential other existences that I feel after as much interaction as I've had with them, that some of them are me in realities, other realities, because I'm able to manipulate myself in those spaces uniquely. And I come back with information that's pertinent to all of my life, all of it. So I've grown in, in ways that have settled me have made me understand why I'm here. Something that I chased down my entire life. I'm 55 now, and I'd say that I've really only understood who I am for about five to seven years. And I think that the evolution of my progress into becoming who I am started probably 10 to 12 years back. And I don't know why that shift occurred, I didn't even really realize it was happening to capitalize on it until well into its progress, which I suppose is the only way it could really have turned my life into something meaningful from where it was. Um, but again, all this to me feels like I was pushed over into an updated version of the simulation as a character with new programming. I've become much more competent at things that I used to struggle with. I've found myself able to do things that I never had the skill set to do, especially athletics. It's It's been markably noticed in my life and by everybody around me. There was an old me and then there's this me. And <clears throat> this is a long-winded way of saying that I believe the shift truly came from a drop of all my anarchist views of the world into one of connectedness among all of us. And if that shift is what brought me into the fold of what a meaningful, destined life of purpose looks like, well, then I have to share that there's hope for everybody. 
because I was the least likely candidate among all of us to come out feeling like this has a purpose and that I serve a role critical to that purpose. And yet, here we are. Yeah, I know, fucking high as a motherfucker on a Monday morning. Because what do I got to do but fucking talk to you? I'm sorry for all the serious shit, but I'm, I've lost my humor. Three weeks. I can't even tell a good knock-knock joke. So, if you start, maybe you could tell one. Pause. Oh, and pause. All right. Well, since we've already broached this subject matter, I might as well update you on the said loogie slide I was hoping for. It has actually started... Well, how can I put this? It is occurring in what looks like glacial time because half of it is probably two inches uh, dripping into the toilet and the rest of it is still on the seat. So, oh, this is why you don't want to spit in your toilet and miss, right? Um, I mean, yeah, there are other lessons to be learned here too, but that's one of them. And I, I guess I always think of life as teaching me something in, in in every capacity I almost think of every single moment I'm going through as well what am I learning now well, what am I learning now what am I learning now I'm learning I'm the problem oh I'm learning not to spit in my fucking house um no I'm not learning that 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 I haven't learned but <clears throat> I'm I'm in progress I am a work of motion both forward and backward, in which I constantly evaluate myself as getting more or less dexterous with my navigating of the universe we call Earth 8675309. Or something like that, right? Like, it's just, that's my character story. It's what's happening. It's actually the thing. That's what life is. It's me building myself into the more robust version of myself that makes me feel like life has purpose because I'm making a better self out of this experience on earth and the last three weeks uh, I don't know I just that person the, the robust version of myself that I've always been building has had one fundamental foundational stone that is of no compromise that I will not succumb to losing my humor in this universe. I will not allow this universe to tear that from me because my sense of humor is the only gift I have for every reality in which I manifest so that enduring the ones of this nature is possible. Otherwise, if my sense of humor in some way can't find a spark of creative insight in the universe that exists, well, then that universe has to change because I don't function without my sense of humor. So for me, that means I cease to exist in a universe where I can't find it. In the last three weeks, as I think about both myself and my self and my representational existence, i.e., What's happening in Israel? Well, uh, maybe you can understand why I have lost my sense of humor. But I'm going to go figure out how to get that situation in the bathroom rectified before we move forward. Because I know you're worried about it as much as I am. Which is zero. And then, well, we'll talk about what's cost me my sense of humor. And so, if you're looking for laughs... Well, unless you're laughing at me, which is what you should be doing, then this is not your episode. But if you're laughing at me, this might be the one you've been waiting for. Pause. Unpause. All right, so let's go through some things that <clears throat> will certainly cost you your sense of humor, such as reflecting upon thyself and thinking, what the fuck, man? What, what the fuck are you doing? Right? Like, if you have those moments, they're not funny. They're maybe funny to the people watching you, but they're not funny to you because you realize you're, again, stubbing your toe on your own obstacles that you never had to put up in the first place, and yet here you sit, bumbling through life, repeating 
the same fucking thing that you found intolerant over and over again previously in life? Why do we have to keep hitting repeat on stupid behaviors that seem almost compulsive in our execution? That part of the human experience, I still haven't figured out. But where it warps me a little bit lately <clears throat> is in my in my approach to um, to uh, I don't know if I want to talk about this. I have to talk about it. All right. If if I have had a weakness in life, it's that I considered all women the same. And not the same like everyone's identical. They all have equal value, which is fortunately where I ended up. And that doesn't mean that evaluating women as relationship contextual partners is relevant to the grand scheme of, yes, we all have immense value that in no way is being realized in the current execution of humanity. But as relationships go, as finding someone to navigate this insanity in some helpful, cooperative, supportive capacity that's reciprocal with you, well, uh, no, no, not all women are the same, right? Not at all. Not even close. But let's just say that in your uh, integratable characteristics, there are nines, eights, and sevens in terms of compatibility. And then there's six, fives, fours, and threes in terms of not even remotely connective enough for a relationship. And then the twos and ones, for whatever reason, are absolutely not in your realm of existence. And it could be uh, like um, uh, Sandra Bullock. I don't consider Sandra Bullock in my realm of existence. She's a one. But not for reasons that uh, uh, had I the access to get to know Sandra Bullock, say in a communal capacity, we were in a book club together or something. I mean, then she could become a seven or an eight maybe because she's Sandra Bullock, but she's a one. I have no access to her. So there are lots of reasons that women are not relationship material. And to me, that's the way the world's always looked. There are, let's say nines all over the place. There are eights even more all over the place. And the sevens are ridiculous. They're everywhere. And really, I didn't see the world having sixes and fives and fours, but it did have ones for sure. Those with whom obviously you don't belong. So I think when I look back as to why I never got married, it's simple. I just never saw anything but the nines as the candidates, and none of them stood out. I mean, they all stood out in their own way because they're not eights. But all the nines were the same. And it felt to me like if you pick a nine, you just pick one, and then you commit. But since that's what I've been doing with girlfriends and finding the commit part hard, it just dawned on me that I didn't have the capacity to be contained by one relationship because there was always another nine with something completely different to offer that in the stale moments of the nine you were with was too seductive to resist for me. And that weakness, which is what I always considered it to me meant there's no way to get close enough to anybody to propose a life together. I just wasn't up for it, obviously. So having that self-realization was the moment I think I stopped caring about life, truly caring, because the only thing that I ever had that was future-oriented was the idea that I might actually spend it with someone. So once I realized that that was... Uh, that was outside the bounds of what I came here capable of doing. Having to admit this, that I literally was too weak to, to not cheat. Uh, yeah, that was life crushing, as it were. And 
still is that I allowed myself to get there. Because really, the only reason I kept failing in relationships is because I never assembled my complete self to present to anything. I was always broken, looking for someone to fix me. And obviously, none of that was ever going to work. Pause. I'm pause. Uh, okay, before I get too far down uh, my relationship transgressions road, uh, I also have just gotten... If, if you think about this question directly, I promise you it's not as easy as you think. But how much truth can you handle? Seriously. How much truth can you handle? And if your response, immediate response was, well, all of it. I I don't know. I disagree. Anymore, I fucking disagree. Because some of the truth, some of the truths are just overwhelming. They're, they're such gobsmacking moments of realization that they... They fundamentally shift your perspective on everything. And in such a way that it, it that you can't unsee this phrase is the only phrase that really applies to the new reality in which you are left to navigate. You you just don't get to go back to the one that was sheltered. It's no longer there. And having your reality pushed <clears throat> to the limit in terms of what you can accept as groundbreaking revelation, it can hurt. But that's just some shit I've been going through lately. The news, the structure that is administrative authority, the power structure, the authoritative legal body, the police, those with guns, those with tanks, those who have the ability to distribute their voice to the masses, the true influencers among us. Well, it's shocking how much they come to the defense of somebody who clearly doesn't deserve it. Pause. Unpause. All right. And generally, who are these people covering up for? The smart fuckers that think they're smarter than everybody else. And, of course, having been one, I know what I'm talking about here. And it's not that you're even smart. You think you're smart because you resonate in this reality with other people who claim that what you have is intelligence. And... Everyone is fucking smart. Every single human being is insanely gifted at analysis and problem solving. That's why you choose to come to humanity. You have an unbelievable skill set in which to interpret this reality. And so once you come to see that there is no intelligence, there is just personal rhythmic... Uh, fluctuations in and out of understanding reality and all of us are gifted but our gifts don't apply to our sense of superiority in problem solving or resonance of the intellectual kind that does exist there are differences among us in terms of capacity in this part of human manifestation, but we're not talking about gifts that supersede or in any way outshine the gifts of the others. And so, as you think you can outsmart the room, you're always proven wrong. Because the room is everybody else's gift, above which you cannot rise. So once hubris has installed itself, well now you're just ripe for the fall. That's all you are. And it's inevitable. It can't not happen. It is how the universe works. So you're serving your own comeuppance in your attitude of superiority. And those of us who have transcended these 
these temptations of personal preference come to see that anyone sitting on that perch is is in fact awaiting the karmic kickback <clears throat> and so it's with this attitude that as i watch those still sheltered by their own sense of superiority supported by resources that if not paid attention to cl closely dupe those without the wherewithal to know better into positions that they don't believe don't think don't even remotely support when pressed but because that pressure is no longer applied just start to herd themselves into these mentalities that because blankety blank says so it must be true and so when i think about how much truth can you handle in america the answer to that question is barely any pause um pops okay and because of this america is a place where <clears throat> when you start to expose actual reality the reaction is ah no 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 mostly unless you just coincidentally trip into another entity of some level of self-reflection who's found the fact that they've been so harnessed and and uh, compartmentalized into a reality that is false that they too are starting to navigate their way into truth. These people are worth finding. And I've only found a couple <clears throat> in my recent say, five, six-month exploration of my community. But they do exist. The rest, however, are uh, are just, they're shocked that they're even considering that the challenges to reality could go as deep as someone with sober reflection posits. It is not a stance on which they're willing to even remotely explore so the shutdown is immediate it is um it is convicted and it is without consideration there's a plight in the american society that it's easier to listen to reinforced narratives of confluence than it is to allow even a potential counter discussion that if realized in full can blow the whole house down that's what we've been sold is that here's a nice enough house that if you don't ask about it well you can keep it but if you start asking questions, well, that that might turn into the housing market where nobody can afford to buy a house. You want that? What do you mean you got it? Oh, yeah, you do got it. That's right, because you fucked up and you asked about how all this works. Should have left it alone. Who gives a shit who cooked Kennedy? He's dead. Kennedy's dead. Now shut up, America. Pause. Um, pause. All right. It's been a little while. I can't even really remember what we were talking about, but... I might be getting a shoulder massage, so this might have to be paused for quite a bit of chunk of time since I'm going back to work at 1 and uh, won't be home until after 7. So, yeah, there's that. And that's one of the reasons I've lost my sense of humor because back, uh, back to burping. Back to work. Back to work. Back to work. Sounds like back to burp, but it's back to work. We'll get into that part in a second, because I don't really want to talk about that right now, but what I do want to get out of the way, because I know I left it hanging, are the nines and the um, the general uh, attitude I had toward relationships from my experience was, okay, so you pick one, you do your best to stay committed to them, but then you keep running into various nines throughout life, and you think, okay, 
this nine is totally different than the nine I've got. So this nine's intriguing. And now why am I putting myself in a position to be with this per Oh my God, now I'm sleeping with this person. What am I doing? Oh, now my marriage is ruined. That just seemed like my path. That's how it was going to happen. So even when I started to find myself <clears throat> thinking I've got to commit, I've got to commit, now's the time, I've got to commit, say, mm, late 20s to mid 30s. <clears throat> because if you're not going to, do it by that point, then kids start to become not even possible. And at that point, what's the point of marriage, right? Fuck. I can't put one and one together and come up with anything other than kids. The rest of it doesn't make sense. Tax breaks, maybe. Okay. So as I realized this isn't going to happen and it wasn't devastating that I wasn't going to have kids because I guess when I put it all together, I thought to myself, well, yeah, how was I going to have kids if I never thought I was going to get married? So Barring the knock on the door from some 17-year-old disenchanted child of your who says, you're my daddy, there's just not a plan in which I can see kids happening. <clears throat> and I kind of come to this realization in a way that it's like, well, why the fuck didn't I realize this in my 20s? Because had I come to see the idea that being a dad was critical on planet Earth, then I would have figured out how to make a marriage work. But as it turned out, I can't even, I wasn't here to have kids, which is fucked up because you should know this, but no, karmically, I can't leave the residue kids leave behind. So once I understood that, that was the first simplification for me when it came to women, because now I didn't have to think of myself as ever caring to commit because there's nothing at stake. I don't have, I mean, I don't have anything other than the intimacy I would share with someone else upon which to base something committable. And all of this started to make sense to me in a way that it couldn't have made sense to me in my 20s and 30s. So even though this revelation was the first, I think, self-realization moment that I was changing, that I had new fundamental ways of seeing the universe, I still didn't understand it was happening. And I didn't understand it was happening probably all the way up until I stopped lying, which still to this day is disorienting. But I've now become this person who doesn't lie. So it's hard to remember the guy who did. I don't in any way forget the fucking messes I put myself in. And I certainly don't forget the lies I told. But to think of all of the... the the dominoes that would have to fall now for me to even be able to spit out some of the lies that I told with regularity. It just, it's, it's amazing to me that either a, I let my life slide out of contention of real truthful presentation of myself to the universe to the point that I was anything but that, or I have somehow had an opportunity to re discover the person I used to be at 10. I don't know how to put this because it doesn't make sense to me, but that's as close as it feels. It's like I, I at 10 stepped out of my body, went off on a journey, let my body do whatever the fuck it decided to do with itself while I was here alone, came back into my body 10 years ago and have now fucking corrected the behaviors that I let go slide while I was gone. And none of this can I claim as, as verifiable or even legitimate. It's obviously some sort of level of projection in my mind to somehow maintain the narrative structure that I'm okay, that this was some sort of rampage of self-discovery. And I don't abide by that. I don't think any way you hurt another person can ever be justified as something that makes you a bigger, better version of yourself. Even if that bigger, better version of yourself is completely built on empathy and remorse. Those are, those are just, they're, they're the, they're the residue of what you can pull out of hurting people. Hurting people is the worst transgression here. And I've always known that. So for my behavior to have slipped into 
uh, indefensible territory in terms of you can't claim you didn't understand people would get hurt by your behaviors. Going into this, you're choosing to do these things clearly said, I don't care who gets hurt. And that sense of self-loathing that I could have diminished my own existence to the point that the fallout that might come with it, devil may care. Let it, let it seed itself into the future of the universe in whatever way it seeds itself. I don't give a fuck. The universe is full of shit. It's a piece of shit. All of it's wrong. I'm wrong. Fuck this universe. And I'm not claiming that I even had this consciously occurring. It's just as you re reflect upon what you did and who you were, these things become apparent. I did not give a fuck about myself or anything else. To the point that even when I thought I was being a good person, I was pretending to be one. When I thought I was exchanging the opportunity for a loving embrace in a relationship with somebody of true character uh, and, and, and human value, I would always wither in the challenge of being that in return because I wasn't aware of how to love myself enough to be myself so that that could exchange. Instead, I demanded of someone a reality that I created that I thought would create a loving condition in which to roll my broken piece into this existence and come out whole. Well, yeah, yeah, that was never going to happen. And these levels of self-delusion are what smart people inevitably are left with because they can't understand, well, at least the broken ones, of which there are many, they can't understand why they can't fix it analytically, plan it, construct it, execute it, make it work so that life is in their favor. And as they consistently find this is not an asset, it's in fact a detriment. Well, I won't say that uh, I dreamt of wanting to be a moron, but I certainly had uh, side thoughts about it. And what I didn't come to see was that there is no such thing as letting go of what you perceive. There is coming to understand how much your perception is feeding you an existence that is your choice in which to relate. And if you just sit by and have the messaging of today's universe thrown at you as it is in America, well, I don't care who you are. You're going to come out of it fucked up. And once I saw the level to which I had allowed all that to fuck me up, well, yeah, it was like going back to my 10-year-old self, the one who, before he became 11 and started listening to all that shit, still knew the universe was a place of wonder and magic, the place it is now for me. So, <sighs> I may have lost my humor, but my sense of wonder? Fuck no. This place is... Life is a gift. It always has been. And if you can't find that from within on this planet, you're missing the point. It's why you're here. To discover life's gifts. That you are one. That we all are one. And that if we can't embrace the concept that that is our manifestation in its reality on this planet... I think we just keep doing this over and over again until we finally figure it out. And that means all of us. So, one at a time, man. I got to convince all of you. I also got to talk about, hmm, do I want to talk about the 110? I mean, if you're living in a universe full of nines, it's not that disappointing, really. Nines are terrific. Hell, eights are terrific. Sevens are even a value. Sixes as one. We're all right. We have our upside. Clearly a little bit more than our downside, but to say that you can't see our downside? <laughs> Is it not on full display? Okay, first, let me just say that I'm not here to impress. I'm not even here to uh, do anything other than 
enjoy moments of the now with a community filled with people I uh, have connections to and am in that connection expecting to see our immediate humanity rise and escalate through the contacts we're making and the uh, harmony of synchronization in our energy that it creates. I know that all sounds like something you'd read in the corner bookstore with crystals and and dream catchers, but if there are ways for us to see in each other the hopes and underserved opportunities for humanity that exist, well, then there's got to be ways for us to cooperatively uh, withdraw that energy or combine those uh, those discordances into something harmonic that that is truly capable of seeing what the human race and its potential realized looks like. And I have no money. I have no prospects. I have no footing in this world. I wander. I philosophize, and I make jokes. So, as a wandering comedian philosopher, well, I'm committed to one thing. And that is making sure that the fulfillment of our humanity is having its best opportunity to emerge by encouraging the individuals among us that they have every chance in this manifestation to sing in a destined pathway of fulfillment that is realized completely. So expecting anything less, that's on us. And that's us diminishing our ability to have the most fulfilling life available, which to me, I say, why?